Good morning, church. So good to be with you. This morning, we're looking at Psalm 100. Psalm 100 has become one of my favorite psalms these past two weeks. Listen carefully to Psalm 100. It says this, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 100 has become one of my favorite all-time psalms. And this psalm invites us to worship the Lord, invites us to praise the Lord, invites us to give thanks to the Lord. This psalm invites us to worship the Lord, invites us to praise the Lord, invites us to give thanks to the Lord. Listen to some of the action words in this psalm. Shout for joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Praise his name. This psalm invites us to worship the Lord. Now, check out verse 3. Listen carefully to verse 3 again. It says this. It says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Smack dab in the middle of this psalm that invites us to worship the Lord is this treasure of a verse. And this gem of a verse speaks of our identity, of who we are. When we think of someone's identity, the question that we often ask is this, tell me about yourself. And we all have our own unique response to that question, tell me about yourself. And my response to that question would probably be something like, well, I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. I went to McKinley High School, and then I went on to the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where I majored in business. And then I worked in the industry of public accounting for a season, upon which then I received my calling for full-time ministry and went to Fuller Theological Seminary and today I'm a pastor and I've had the honor of being married to this amazing woman, 23 years of marriage and we live in Eva Beach and we have two dogs. And here's the thing, those things that I just mentioned are true of me, but are they the truest things about me. Here's the thing. Anything that can change in your life is probably not the truest things about you. Anything in your life that is subject to change is probably not the truest things about you. And so your profession, what you do, your career, your rate of pay, your position and title, your popularity, the number of likes and views that you get, the number of friends and followers that you have, your appearance, your health, your relationships, 
where you live and what you have or don't have and your circumstances. All these things that I just mentioned are subject to change and they are not the truest things about you. In life, there's one thing that you can be sure of and that is change. Change will take place all around you and it will take place all the time. Change will take place at work, at home, in your relationships, in your health, in our state, in our nation, in our world. Change will happen. Change will happen. And sometimes change will be good. Sometimes change will be not so good. Sometimes change will be hard. And sometimes change will be not so hard. Sometimes change will be exciting. And sometimes change will not be so exciting. But change will happen in your life. But there's one thing that does not change. One constant that will remain the same, and that is Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 8 says this about Jesus Christ. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ never changes. He is the same. And it is critical that our identity is anchored in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, when the storms of life come and when change happens, we will lose our way. We will feel tossed to and fro. We will feel lost. We will lose our worth. We will lose our identity. And if our identity is not anchored in Jesus Christ, then sometimes what happens is we will begin to identify with our circumstances. And some of you are going through difficult circumstances in life and you are beginning to identify with your circumstances. Don't do it. You are not your circumstances. Instead, your identity The truest thing about you is wrapped up in who you are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that in Christ Jesus, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. In Christ Jesus, you are chosen and predestined and adopted. In Christ Jesus, you are loved and accepted and forgiven and redeemed. In Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. That is the truest thing about you. You are who God says you are. And then take a look at the very last verse of Psalm 100, verse 5. It says this. It says, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That verse speaks of God's character, speaks of who God is. And this is the reason that we worship. You see, before Genesis 1-1, before those words, in the beginning, there was God, and God was good, and God is good, and God will continue to be good. Before Genesis 1-1, before even those words, in the beginning, God's love was already enduring. And God's love is enduring. And God's love will continue to endure forever. Before Genesis 1-1, even before those words in the beginning. There was God, 
And God was faithful. And God is faithful. And God will continue to be faithful through all generations. This is the reason we worship. Because the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope you have a wonderful week. God bless you and God bless your family.